Father, we thank you for this uh, Bible study here tonight. We give you honor and glory and praise. And Father God, I ask that this word would go forth and bear much fruit for the kingdom. And Father God, I ask that uh, your heavenly angels would protect all those that are watching this and everyone would get a lot out of this study here. And we give you honor and glory and praise for it. And Father God, I want to thank you for all those that uh, participate in giving to this ministry. And uh, Father God, I ask that you'd reward them back and they'd have a great return for their labor and for their giving. And Father, we thank you for that also. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, Amen, amen and Amen. Uh, you're all welcome to take your seats. Uh, ushers, if you would, Come on forward here tonight. If you are watching uh, either live or you're watching this later on on YouTube and one of our other channels, we're glad to have you watching. Become a regular financial partner with this ministry. You can do so by going to our website, mountainfaith.org, and Amen. we'll be delighted to have you on board and, and, in fact, give every single time. And also, too, if you haven't done so, go to our website and download our mobile app. It's wonderful uh, to use. You can give off of it. You can watch Watch right. all of our YouTubes off of it. And by the way, all of our YouTube videos are free. And then also you can get daily devotionals. I read my daily devotionals every single day. And it's wonderful to read those. And they're based on just recent uh, messages that I've given. So if you're watching on television or if you're watching us on YouTube or watching us live, you'll notice that our daily devos are right in line with what we just saw on television or just heard uh, from the pulpit. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Anyway, tonight we're going to be studying some more about the end times. And I want to talk about a review again, because not everyone that watches us, Kathy, uh, would see us like the previous week. Last week, we covered a lot of information. The first thing that we covered last week is this is my uh, seven feast uh, uh, chart for 2022. And the seven feasts are the feast days of the Jews ordained by Moses, given to Moses by God. And they're a, actually a prophetic timetable. And the prophetic timetable of Passover, unleavened bread, uh, first fruits, and weeks, which are spring festivals, were all fulfilled when Jesus went to the cross. And then uh, weeks uh, was fulfilled when the Holy Spirit came down on Pentecost. It came down in the upper room, and then uh, subsequently, everyone getting baptized in the Holy Spirit 50 days after Jesus went to the cross. But the three remaining feasts are fall festivals, and they have not yet been fulfilled. And they are trumpets, which is also known as the New Year, the Day of Atonement, or booths or tabernacles. And those fall feasts have yet to be spiritually fulfilled with gigantic events in the earth. Amen. The first one that's going to be fulfilled will be trumpets. That's the next one that's coming. And that's the first of the fall feasts. And trumpets is when Jesus appears on the clouds. Mm -hmm. The next one after that is the Day of Atonement, which I believe is going to be happening right after the rapture of the church, within 10 days of the rapture of the church. And finally, booths and tabernacles is when Jesus comes back, puts his feet down on terra firma in Jerusalem, and uh, begins the thousand-year millennial reign. So do you think that will take place uh, in, inside of a year, all three of these events? All, all three of these events will take place in a period of seven years. Okay. So uh, the trumpet starts the clock ticking for the seven, year, right. okay. seven years. Then immediately we have the tribulation, which lasts seven years. You have the first half of the tribulation, three and a half years. The second half of the tribulation, known as the Great Tribulation, which is the second half. All these events we're going to be talking about. Uh, loosely and, and having a great, great right. conversation. Right. So I can teach us from the pulpit, and, and but we don't have any interaction. Uh, so today we're going to be dealing with that. Now, last week I talked about uh, the scripture in the book of Revelation concerning Wormwood. And the first thing I talked about is the meteor that God told me to get near a window, specifically a specific window in my house back on April 14th, 2010. It was a Wednesday night. The, this mm -hmm. meteor came uh, by at 10.03, um, 10.07 in the evening. And I was sitting at this window and, every, and there was no leaves on the trees at this time in April. And it was very close to the ground. 
That was very important for me because it showed me that meteors come and these giant pieces of rock come with sometimes no warning that uh, maybe someone might know that they're coming, but if it's a meteor shower, uh, these, these meteors can be bumped around quite a bit. Anyway, I saw that, and I saw it in, in my head. I saw it happen in slow motion, and the whole sky got 10 times brighter than it did mm -hmm. uh, in the daytime. And, um, and I saw this thing rotating, and there's, you know, I have the, the paper on that. So wormwood is wormwood. going to be way bigger. Wormwood is going to be way, way bigger. That's going to be an asteroid, not a, just a meteorite. And uh, there is a, um, an asteroid coming to the Earth. It's already been predicted that it's going to come by the Earth in 2029, all right? And it, that also uh, is going to be in April. I believe it's in April. Uh, it's interesting that these two events are April events, number one. Number two, if this is wormwood, if, excuse me, it, it's a, yeah, it's April. If you count back three and a half years, if wormwood does in fact hit the earth in mid-tribulation, making the waters bitter, then if you count back three and a half years, that's counting back to the fall of 2025. That's just three and a half years Mm -hmm. uh, that's three and a half years from now, which would be the beginning of the clock of Jesus returning on the clouds, if, if those things are correct. They're saying that this, this gigantic uh, asteroid called uh, Apophis is not going to hit the Earth, but it's, it, they are predicting that it's going to come in between the satellites that we have in the sky right. and the Earth which means it could take out satellites on its way through. If it hits a satellite, it could be diverted, or it could be diverted by, um, by gravity from a planet, from the sun, from just about anything. So here's the interesting thing. If, if it's according to what you're saying here, possibly that, that we'll be in mid-tribulation when wormwood comes, mm -hmm. right? Right. That means we won't be here. That's correct. Number two. Yep. Or it could be that maybe if... if Tribulation hasn't started yet. You think this is... It, well, yeah, it, I mean, it, it, maybe the tribulation I mean, won't start. Because the earth is falling apart. The, the earth is wearing out, right, as right, we know it. And, right. we, and we do know that for a fact, that the earth is wearing out. Right, that, right. we know the book of Isaiah says that the earth, uh, uh, in the last days, will totter like a drunkard. Right, and we are already a little bit off our axis. That's correct. And we do have earthquakes. We do have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, droughts. We have floods, not mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. not the Noah kind, but mm -hmm. we're having floods. We have famine. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the drought is the big thing. Mm -hmm. Not in just our country, but mm -hmm. in a lot of countries, mm -hmm. drought's a big thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think that there's, I think that there's even going to be more and more happening to the to the world be, before Jesus returns and maybe that and because of that people might be a uh, cause to to come back to Jesus mm. in other words this might be the vehicle to bring them back to Jesus seeing I, I, the world fall apart I, around I, them I agree I agree and um, we know that uh, as the earth is tottering. By the way, the earth started tottering on its axis in 2004 when we had a giant tsunami uh, in, I think it was Thailand? the Indian Ocean. And it, what, it killed 300,000 people. But it, the tsunami was a result of a sub, uh, a, 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 an earthquake in the ocean. In the ocean, yep. And so 300,000 people died from that tsunami. And, uh, and untold's more, you know, injured and, and, you know, injured for life. The point being is that when that happened, we were preaching here in the church. And so the following weeks, I went and did a, a review of all the volcanoes. Volcanoes and earthquakes are similar types of upheavals of nature. Mm -hmm. And so I did a study of volcanoes and brought it to the pulpit on a Sunday. And I showed that since the mid 1800s, volcanoes have been increasing every 10 years. In fact, almost doubling every 10 years. And it's not because we weren't recording them. There's people living all around the globe in, in a scientific community 
since the 1700s, but in the 1800s, when I would, is, whereas I limited my study to, it showed every decade, every 10 years, that the amount of, earth, of excuse me, volcanoes erupting around the globe increased every 10 years, doubled every 10 years. So right now we're having so many volcanoes occurring and volcanoes are doing a great deal of damage to the, the sky. Someone, someone says, well, we have to take care of Mother Earth and not pollute, our, uh, pollute the ozone. You know who, get, who does the majority of the pollutants that get cast into the earth a thousand times more than what all the countries put into the atmosphere? Volcanoes do a thousand times more. So if you take all the damage that human beings and cow flatulence and anything mm -hmm. else that anyone has ever pointed to and say, you know, we've got to limit this because we're damaging our ozone or we're harming our environment, volcanoes do a thousand times more every year than every human being in every factory and every car does in the same time frame. Isn't that amazing? That is. And that's the science. That's, that's not hyperbole, that's science. So earthquakes have also been increasing. Yes. And we've seen like in places like Yellowstone, mm -hmm. uh, which is, has a lot of thermal activity, that we've seen a lot more earthquakes in Yellowstone just over the past 20 years. And you and I are very familiar with Yellowstone because up until recently, you and I went there every two years. In fact, you and I backpacked in Yellowstone in 1978. We went into the backcountry in Yellowstone yeah. and we were just, you know, young kids at the time. I think I, I, think I was, what, 22 and you were 21 at the time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we didn't see, we saw six people in five days. We know a lot about Yellowstone. You know, we can tell you about moose populations and bison populations, but we can also tell you that we, <laughs> we pay attention to what happens uh, geologically there right. and not as close as the animals but I looked up several times in fact just last year I looked up again uh, the uh, earthquakes in Yellowstone and Yellowstone now was have I think last year had 4,500 major and minor earthquakes Wow 4,500 that means there's they're happening you know the seismic activity is happening 10 times 20 times a day now, many of these are very, you know, very small, but in my estimation, what would happen, and as some have predicted, what would happen if Yellowstone blows its top? Because all that thermal activity that we see with the boiling uh, pots and, and you know, yeah. or mud or the boiling crystal blue water and the water is at, you know, right at boiling temperature and then some of the saline water is boiling and that's 400, 500 degrees. Yeah, that's right. What would happen if that blew? Uh, and where would the ash go? Well, let's think about the, uh, the forest fires that have been happening every single year and, in and Idaho, yeah. in California, in California, in California, in California, and California. California, and California. <laughs> just keep going on. You know, if California would repent, we'd probably get rid of all the forest fires that come from California. Maybe. Do you realize that the, the world is breaking sin, down, Kathy? Sin brings death into anything. So sin brings sin death. Sin that man creates brings death into himself. Mm -hmm. And then the sin that mankind creates brings death. Like, you know, whether it's a, a, a country, a government, mm -hmm. it brings death mm -hmm. and destruction. So God, so God formed the entire planetary world as we know it in six days. Yes. You know, well, he made planet Earth on day one. He made the sun, the stars, and the moon on day four. So three whole days, planet Earth was the only rock in the universe. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't spin off of the moon or anything like that. But uh, God mathematically programmed all the stars and all the galaxies and the solar systems to be spinning without right. any deterioration in in their activity, right. it was the sin of man that began to cause deterioration. The first large deterioration and that major catastrophe was the flood. And the great flood happened as a result of the sin of man. It didn't happen because you know, you know, God just thought it was great timing. It was the, the fall of man that produced sin in the earth that started to erode God's perfect mathematical equation 
of the universe. Right. It was the sin of man that caused that. Anyway, so now we had a great flood. God said, I'll never again flood the earth again. Right. But even like Enoch and Noah and Moses and other others pr have prophesied that the second destruction of the earth will be by fire. Makes sense. And it makes complete sense. And up until that time, we're going to see, uh, we're going to have wars and rumors of wars. We're going to have earthquakes and famines in various places. Then as we come into the tribulation itself, then we're going to have a, uh, we're going to have a quarter of the earth burned up. We're going to have a quarter of the earth under um, great uh, trials. We know it at a certain point, not only is Wormwood uh, going to make all the water undrinkable over a great part of the earth. So this wormwood, this asteroid that's going to come down, is going to have poisons in it. That's just going to make drinking water uh, pretty much unavailable, and people are just going to die from thirst. And if they drink the wormwood, there, you know, who knows what's in it—radiation or right. some other toxins, right? That's right. So, anyway, uh, we we looked at that last week, and I just thought that was fascinating. It was, and yes. you know, right now it's speculation, but as we get closer to twenty. 24, 2025, they're going to be updating their mathematical, which is what I have here, their, their mathematical estimations mm -hmm. of what is that, you know, how, how is this asteroid really going to impact the Earth? You know, if it doesn't impact the Earth, could it take out satellites? Could it take out a bunch of satellites and destroy our ability to communicate? So anyway, so now, last week we were talking about... Um, as we move into the end times, and uh, someone was talking uh, about Gog and Magog, so why don't we go over again and look at Ezekiel chapter 38. And Kathy, just read, um, we read this last week, but it's good to re read it again. Mm -hmm. Read just the first four verses of Ezekiel 38. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, set your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against you, O Gog, prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal. I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws, and I will bring you out and all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them splendidly attired, a great company with buckler and shield, all of them wielding swords. Okay, so what's happening in the news right now? Gog and Magog, uh, Gog is referring to the area of Russia and the, uh, the sister states, and Magog mm -hmm. is the uh, leader and ruler of Gog at that time. God had me prophesy, the Spirit of God had me prophesy back, I think it was about two months ago, Maybe, maybe almost two and a half months ago, and we could uh, we could direct you to that. After this is posted on Facebook, our staff will put a hyperlink mm -hmm. in the comments so that you could go there and listen to these prof this prophecy. But God had me prophesy concerning Putin, and He said uh, God told me that uh, Putin was going to return to his own land, um, and. He's neither going to be a, a victor nor a loser, at least according to how the media will portray it. Uh, but he will be pushed back out of uh, what we know to be the Ukraine. And then um, he's going to return to his own land. And God gave me a specific scripture and said he's going to die there. And now we're hearing some wild guesses, if, if he would, that he is sick. And different people are pointing to different things. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is that notice that a lot of the news media is calling on generals, retired generals, the U.S. generals, to kind of give insight. Commentary. Yeah. Commentary on, uh, what is it, Finland and Sweden now want to uh, join NATO and mm -hmm. how he doesn't like it, how Putin doesn't like it. Um, and, but God gave me a word. And there is going to be no nuclear war. Yes, I remember that. Um, in this conflict, and uh, so, and it's not going to be. And everyone's afraid that Russia is going to do something. And our government, I guess, apparently, I mean, I don't know what the inner workings of our government is, but you know, some have reported that our government is fearful that he's going to pull the trigger and drop a nuke, uh, a localized nuke. Well, what do we know about the Ukraine right now? 
there's a nuke that kind of went off. It's called Chernobyl. And when did Chernobyl happen? Some 20, 25 years ago, whenever it happened. And now, apparently, uh, Russian troops were camped out in Chernobyl, and they were digging in the dirt, and they were putting their tanks in the dirt. And the place is a death trap. Yes. They don't even, the Ukrainians don't even let their own people live in, in, in this wide area of Chernobyl. The whole city got uh, it, it turned turned into ghost town. a ghost town, a, a ghost city overnight, and it still stands. Right. I mean, we saw the documentary on that. So, yeah. so then, then we heard back. Um, if you're listening to the right information, we heard back uh, like a month and a half ago that the Russian troops that were there started getting violently ill. Oh yeah, sick. So they had to leave the area. I guess. Uh, you know. Um, Ukraine's already had its nuclear experience. Yes. And um, so, I mean, I don't know how, you know, what year that, that was, but maybe someone well, remembers. That was when it. they were still the Soviet Union. So it was a part of the Soviet Union at so. that time. So that would have been, what, prior to 1982? I don't think so. Oh, my goodness. Time flies. So, uh, and that Putin was going to die. Now, understand that Russia um, operates with a supreme, basically a supreme leader. Right. And when this supreme leader dies, things are going to change for a period of time, and there will be a, a, a resounding period of revival in Russia and revival of business, revival of thinking, revival of acceptance of ideas. But that's going to come to an end, too. And so when God had me prophesy all these things, uh, so when I'm listening to these generals talk about, you know, is he saber rattling? Is he going to drop a nuke? Well, none of the things that are happening to Putin right now are a threat to him. No one's threatening to attack Russia. Right. No one's threatening to overthrow his government and kill him. He's got really no worries. He's on the offensive and he's not, you know, he's not performing all that well. I mean, they've frozen some bank accounts, monies. Uh, they have, um, you know, shaken their fist at him. Like, oh, you're but he's still you're selling his oil. Yeah. So. But supposedly not, but yes, that's so, the main income right. stream. I think that we have at least three and a half years before the rapture. Um, of course, I could be mistaken, but if we get raptured tonight on the way home, uh, as we're going up, get mad at me, you know? <laughs> 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 and write me, send me an email. I won't be here to read it. Uh, but if I'm, you know, if I'm not wrong, and we have at least three and a half years, then some other prophecies God has given me, and I know we're getting off track here, but this is a good discussion. In, I think it was 2008, uh, God gave me uh, a prophecy concerning a future president, and I, all I had was a vision of this man from the back, and he was wearing a long, tall, dark coat, and he had long, white hair coming down, and he was a white man, and, and Obama had just been elected. President Obama had just been elected and had just stepped into office. And I believe the prophecy I gave, uh, some people tell me it was in October, but I, I thought it was in January, but we could go back January, the following January, we could go back and look that up. Nevertheless, I, I prophesied and I said, the next president will be a white man and he's going to serve two terms. Well, we know Trump, what I end up finding, figuring out and then seeing it happen exactly as I saw it in my vision on television when Trump was walking up that cold day on those black stairs for his inauguration. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I saw that vision fulfilled, but then God spoke to me and said, two. And then uh, other people in our congregation have had similar visions recently, but then when my vision ended into his presidency, which means either God didn't want to show me how the, his presidency was going to end, or the rapture occurs and, every, and the beginning of the tribulation occurs somewhere between the beginning and the end of his presidency. Which, of course, Trump would not be responsible for, but maybe someone would like to blame him for that, too. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, uh, at that moment in time, however, they, however, whenever the rapture occurs, we're immediately going to get rid of our Earth suits. And I, and I guess uh, that's what we could, we could talk about for the rest of the evening here. 
so we're going to get a glorified body. And so why don't we go and look at some of these scriptures and uh, let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Kathy. 1 Corinthians 15. And start reading for me in verse 12. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is vain. Your faith is also vain. Mm -hmm. Moreover, we are even found to be false witnesses of God, because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If we have hoped in Christ in this life only, we are of all men most to be pitied. All right, so we see what's happening here is the argument is being made, kind of a circular argument is being made for the resurrection. All right, and he, he's saying that if, if resurrection, if some people say that the resurrection can't occur, then Jesus was not resurrected. He was not raised. Mm -hmm. And we know he was resurrected and raised because there are witness, we have witnesses to this day documented in the word of God that there were witnesses to his resurrection. The women first and then later on some of the disciples. Right. All right now jump down to verse 35. But someone will say, how are the dead raised and with what kind of body do they come? You fool, that which you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And that which you sow, you do not sow the body which is to be, but a bare grain, perhaps of wheat or something else. But God gives it a body just as he wished, and to each of the seeds a body of his own. All right, so one of the things we have to understand is God made us, God made us in three parts. God is in three parts, and in Genesis chapter 1, he said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. Now, I wrote a book on space aliens, why there are biblically and scientifically cannot be any space aliens, and one of the things I look at specifically is the different Hebrew words mm -hmm. for let us make man in our image and according to our likeness. The word image and likeness are two completely different words in the Hebrew, and one it describes our how we're crafted, and it's the same terminology that's used for planking the outside of a boat. Okay. And the planking of an outside of a boat is what? It's curved, right? Because you have the ribs of the boat, the ribs would be like our bones, and then we have the exterior shell, which are, is the planking, and that, that one word describes us there. The second word is a completely different word, and it's about an operational. It's not about the looks of us, but it's the, our operational, how we operate. And we literally are a mini crafted, as a human being, we're crafted in God's image physically. So God has ribs, mm -hmm. God has an outer skin. We know that God has hair, he has a mid waist, he's got eyes, he's got a tongue, he's got feet. That is how God is, we were made in his image, number right. one, but then we were made in his operation. We are not God, but we were made in how he operates. We were made in his operation. So when we come and we look at the three parts of man, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are spirit, soul, and body. If you take away our body, everyone that's died already, their body has decomposed or it has been you know it's gone by right it has been burned or you know whatever god is not going to let those human beings be without a body for eternity because we're made up in his image his image is three parts he wants our image to be three parts of course so the whole part of the resurrection is not just being raised up but it's being resurrected for the 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 express purpose of being given an immortal body. Yes. All right. I'm going to, uh, Josh, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to use your guitar as an example here. This is an expensive guitar, and Joshua's got quite a few expensive guitars. And when our children were young, we bought them a plastic 
guitar with plastic strings, mm -hmm. and I had it up until a couple of years ago right. when I was cleaning the basement. We have eight children, mm -hmm. and our kids played on it and had fun. Right, right. They all played on it. You know, some of, some of them took guitar playing a little bit more seriously, like Joshua and Michael. So that cheap little plastic fake guitar that cost me, you know, maybe 12 bucks 25, 30 years ago. That's like our mortal bodies are today. The immortal body that we're going to be given is the difference between this guitar and that plastic cheap oh, guitar. Oh, that's good, yeah. This guitar is extraordinary. It's exquisite. Right. It's different than other guitars. In fact, this guitar, uh, he's had it upgraded since he only had this like for what, six months? And um, it's an extraordinary piece of equipment. Well, it doesn't even they, compare with the little baby toy. Right. And right now, our bodies are kind of like a baby toy compared to what the body that we're going to have. But it's important to God for us to be complete. Mm -hmm. And until we get our glorified body, we're not going to be complete. And in fact, when we get our glorified body, we're going to see him for we will see him as he is, Scripture says, for we will be like him, referring to Jesus. Jesus already now has his glorified body. Right. And so the explanation and understanding is, is that God wants us complete. And so those that have died have lost part of their completeness. But when Jesus shows up on the clouds, Scripture says uh, that we're going to be, we'll jump down to, um, jump down to verse 42 and start reading there. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown a perishable body. It is raised an imperishable body. All right, body. so this perishable body is going to die. Yes. Uh, whether, we, whether it dies prior to Jesus returning on the clouds, because it's so close. There's going to be so many people that I'm speaking to now that are going to be alive when Jesus returns on the clouds. You're not going to have an opportunity to die. Mm -hmm. But your human body that you have right now is going to be left behind. It's not going to just disappear or deteriorate. It's, there's going to be... Millions and millions of dead bodies laying on the ground, on top of the ground, all over the planet. There's going to be pilots Ooh. that are going to die while they're flying airplanes. Mm -hmm. There's going to be people driving cars. Their bodies are going to be left in the car, and the car is just going to turn into a wreck. Uh, there are going to be people riding bicycles, and if it's a group of bikers, there's going to be people uh, asleep. Jesus said that uh, two will be. At the in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two will be sleeping, one will be taken, one will be left. So there'll be, and half the planet we know is asleep, half the planet is awake or waking up or going to sleep. And so we know that Jesus prophesied that this is going to happen globally. Yes. At the same time, in an instant. And we know it's an instant because we can see this as it comes up. So first, we're, this perishable body is going to die, but then we're going to be given an imperishable body, a body that doesn't need glasses, that doesn't need its teeth done, right? that doesn't uh, need to eat, although we'll, we're going to have food in heaven, but it's not going to be, it's not going to be that we have to eat it. Um, and we know that there are trees that, with the trees of life and, and all kinds of uh, fruit that bearing on, you know, in heaven, mm -hmm. um, in the new Jerusalem. So this glorified body that's going to come is spectacular. We're going to be able to uh, disappear and appear. What did Jesus do? Jesus went through, he, he had just appeared and then he would disappear. Well, how could he do that? Because his glorified body could travel at the speed of light. Right. Keep reading, Kathy. Uh, start in verse 42 again. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is a sown perishable body. It is raised an imperishable body. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. 
It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. Now, 44, verse 44 is very important. And the reason why it's so important is because you can't get a spiritual body unless you first had a natural one. So he says, if there is a natural body, then it is raised. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. In other words, you have to be a human being to get a spiritual body. You have to be human once. Right. Right. And however you want to define that, whether it's in the womb, out of the womb or whatever, then jump down to uh, start reading in verse 50. Now, I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. All right. So we cannot um, we can't move into the next realm with an, uh, at, in our natural Which bodies. Natural body, right. This next transition to heaven that we're going to experience mm-hmm. shortly. We can't go there in our natural body. Now, two have, but special provision has been made for those two, and that is Enoch and Elijah. Neither one of them have physically died in the natural. And we know this because they're going to come back and they're going to die uh, during a seven-year tribulation after wreaking havoc uh, on people that attack them, and then they are going to physically die, and then they're going to come back to life again. Go ahead. Keep reading. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. All right. So not everyone is going to die. All right. Not there's going to come a time where Jesus is going to return and we're not not everyone that's alive right now is going to die. And that's what this scripture is saying that was given 2000 years ago. 2000. Think of that. Everyone that's read that scripture for 2000 years up until at least you know, in the last 70 years, 80 years, they've died. But now we're living in a time where this scripture, this specific scripture is going to come to pass. That's dramatic. All right, read that one again. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. Now that word sleep there means to die. Right? We will not all, not all of us are going to die. That's what that means. Keep reading. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed, for this perishable must okay, be... Okay, let's stop again. So, uh, we talk about the uh, fall feast, time, uh, the prophetic timetable uh, out of the Feast of the Jews. Here we see the term trumpet being used twice. Right. Right? In one verse, fulfilling... Last so, trumpet. The last trumpet. So fulfilling this prophetic timetable of the Feast of Trumpets, which is, gonna, which, is the, which is also known as the Civil New Year. And what, what's going to happen? A new year is going to start. A new season is going to start immediately when the church disappears. Okay? Right. So that's, that's, read that verse again. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. All right, so the dead are going to be raised up out of the ground. Right. And then, and that's going to happen first, Then they're going to go up to meet the Lord in the air, and then we who are alive and remain, we shall be taken up with them, and so we shall ever be with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Okay, keep reading. For this perishable must... Put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immorality, then will come about the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Amen. (laughs) Amen. Amen. So now, let's go over to 1 Thessalonians. I'm going to read from chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about those who are asleep. Again, that's referring to those that are dead. So that you will not grieve as do the rest who have no hope. All right? So we don't need to grieve about our relatives that have died if they died in Christ. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For this we say to you, all right, so those that have died righteous in Jesus. 
For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. All right, so when Jesus comes on the clouds, this one verse tells an entire story. We will not precede those that are dead. All right, for this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord on the clouds mm -hmm. will not precede those who have died. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, here he comes again, and the trumpet of God. And so he's returning on the Feast of Trumpets. My right. goodness. And the dead in Christ will rise first. So um, here's the question for you. The question is, uh, how are they going to rise up? Does God need to find their DNA? No. Okay, and, and what makes you think so? Have you had, well, you had God some created everything from nothing with mm -hmm. his word. Mm -hmm. So he speaks the word and mm -hmm. all these people are raised up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that it, to me, it's obvious. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need that. He's, he, he, can, he can do anything. Um, the other thing is that what about those people who have, you know, died in the fire? Mm -hmm. he, he, and those are people that were going to be going to heaven. Mm -hmm. What, you think God can't give them an imperishable body? Mm -hmm. Of course he can. Mm -hmm. He can do anything. Well, I, here, this is really so, interesting. You and I, we grew up Catholic. And, right. And when we were growing up, I remember my father saying something to the effect, when we saw something in a National Geographic program about how uh, people in Asian countries, when I was a boy, this is back in the 60s, how they would cremate their bodies. Exactly. And my father just would go, oh, that's so terrible. You know they can't yes. go to heaven when their yes. body's been cremated. That is a teaching. Yes. Why did the different Catholics and Protestant churches, why did they burn other Protestants at the stake? And the reason behind it was, is that if we burned you at the stake, you would could not get into eternity. You could not get into heaven because your body's been burned up. Sure. Mm -hmm. And the, the fallacy here is, is that God is not going to make a glorified body out of your old... That's right, out, out of, of your out old of, skin and bones. Out That's of right. your old DNA. That's right. He's already got an, an imperishable body waiting mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. It's already been made, I believe. And when you go to heaven or you're, we're caught up, that's mm -hmm. when we're going to get that body. Now, someone from Milwaukee has been sending us anonymously uh, stuff repeatedly. I get it every month. And uh, something showed up in the mail today. And I, I take a look at this stuff you know, and see if there's value in it. Um, and they sent us today something about two uh, senators or two people in Wisconsin. I don't know if they're senators. They're state, they're state representatives, however they whatever their titles are, that are voting, are bringing a bill to pass that would cause a human body that's been, that has died to be, instead of being cremated, right? So, so now we know there's two types of, uh, you know, burial, you could say. There's regular burial into the ground, and now what's becoming very, very popular now is cremation. Yes. And the reason why I don't have a problem with cremation is, is God's not going to use those ashes. Right. He doesn't need, you know, someone says, well, I scattered my dad's ashes. Can God find him? God doesn't need to find him. The soul right. and the spirit are what now remain. And God doesn't, only needs the soul and the spirit that he has, he can easily find to give it a brand new body. Anyway, so I get this thing in the mail. So we know that there's burial of the body in a casket or whatever. And then that, now there's cremation, which is getting very popular because it's so inexpensive compared to, you know, planting a person in. And how many people actually have a burial plot any longer for their family? This you know, it, society has ch so changed in 50 years. This third thing they're proposing, which is brand new, is not burial in the ground and it's not cremation. It's actually acid deterioration. The body's literally put in an acid bath and the body deteriorates and it, it goes into uh, some other form. Mm. And it's just, right now, it's just discarded. And so, um, 
you know, you've seen, I've seen movies. Yeah, I know. You know, but anyway, so they're proposing that, and the person that sent us this this printout, you know, from somewhere in the state, said, you know, we need to go against this. And the concept, the reason why they want to go against it is because it's, number one, it's brand new, and anything that's brand new, people are going to rebel against because it sounds so disgusting. Mm -hmm. But I, I, knowing what we are going to be studying on tonight, this shows up just a couple hours ago in the mail, and I'm reading it, and I'm going like, well, this is how people felt about cremation back 35, 40 years ago right. in this country. We, we, we thought cremation was, that was horrible. Mm -hmm. Why would you cremate a body if that person wants to get into heaven? This is just, they're just coming up with a new way to decompose a body without even going through the process of right? cremation, mm -hmm. cremation and, and going to a crematorium. So I, I, I think that it kind of is disgusting. But, you know, I, I think a lot of things will change. I'm not endorsing it or not endorsing it, but I'm saying God doesn't need that body. That's right. And we're going to be given a glorified body. So now armed with that, all right, so in verse 15, uh, by the word of the Lord, those who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So the dead will rise first to go up and meet the Lord in the air. Then verse 17, then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them what those that were dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. All right. So we're going to meet him in the air. Mm -hmm. We're not going to meet him down here. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Now jump down to chapter five, verse one. Now as to the times and the epochs, brethren, you have no need of anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come just like a thief in the night. While they are saying peace and safety, then destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman with child and they will not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that the day would overtake you like a thief. Okay, so let's stop here. Let's say, for example, that we, we come into an age here in the United States and worldwide where prosperity is way up, where everything is way up. By the way, prosperity doesn't bring Revival. It does not. And, uh, and terrible things happening doesn't bring revival. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. The people that are far away from God, that want to stay far away from God, no amount of pain, either financially or uh, physically, right. can get their hearts turned around. Right. But there are people in the center who could be swayed mm -hmm. by these different events. Let's just say, for example, we come into an administration where everything is going great, great guns, and, and there's peace on the earth like you just can't believe. Mm -hmm. Couldn't that be the fulfillment of the scripture? Look at this. When they are saying, verse 3, peace and safety, then destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman with child, and they will not escape. So, it could be that we could come into the greatest season, and I believe it's going to happen because I, I believe that this is one of the many scriptures that define and, 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 and prophesy this. We're going to come into one of the greatest times of prosperity shortly. It, we just came out of one of the greatest times of prosperity ever. The lowest right. interest rates that have ever existed. Right. That's right. In my lifetime, I'm 66 years old, in my lifetime, happened up until just recently. Zero percent interest at the Fed mm -hmm. just to get rid of money. Yeah. Do you know how many people you and I recommended to rewrite notes? Yeah. And we know we must have recommended personally maybe to 20 or 30 different people that end up going and getting their homes or their buildings refied. And it dropped, you know, they, they say... I know a couple people that just refining the couple loans that they had, they saved over $1.5 million in interest payments if for the life of that note. So if the note was 25 mm -hmm. years or 30 years, $1.5 million in just refining. I believe we're going to have a greater financial windfall coming sometime soon. 
when I say sometime soon, because I believe it's connected to politics. Right. Uh, you know, it, we're going to have to wait for it, but it is coming. And I believe it's going to be during that time of financial revival that Jesus is going to return on the clouds. And then what's going to happen? All the millions of dead bodies laying all over the earth? Those, it will come upon them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman with child, and they will not escape. They can't escape the earth. They're stuck here. While then the beginning of the seven-year tribulation happens. Right. It's extraordinary, Kathy. So jump down to... Um, okay, so now let's go over. Uh, let's go over and find out what happens right at that moment in time. Let's go over to the book of Isaiah, chapter twenty-six. The book of Isaiah, chapter twenty-six, and we'll close it here for the night. And before we read that, Isaiah twenty-six. So what? Uh, some people um, think that. Uh, in order to have your body resurrected, we need a germ or we need DNA. We don't need that at all, right? right. Then some people think that the resurrection is you're going to be identified uh, with as how you died. So if you were old, you're going to be resurrected old. Mm -hmm. And if you were lame, you're going to be resurrected lame. Oh. All right. So that's not true. And then some people uh, think that uh, we're not going to be that our resurrection will be actually a reincarnation. We're going to be reincarnated as a goat or a, a, an amoeba or a mouse or a rat or maybe even a human being if we behave. There is no reincarnation. No. It's but for, uh, according for man, but once to die and then the judgment. Right. Right? So let's find out what's going to happen immediately at, immediately. In the twinkle of an eye, we just found out. In the twinkle of an eye, we're going to meet Jesus in the year. Then in Isaiah chapter 26, read what happens, right? In verse, starting in verse 19. Your dead will live, their corpses will rise. You who lie in the dust, awake and shout for joy. Your dew is as the dew of the dawn, and the earth will give birth to the departed spirits. So that's exactly what we just read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It's exactly. And this is, this is prophecy. This prophecy uh, uh, Isaiah gave was around 650 B.C. So this prophecy is 2,700 years old. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Come, my people, <coughs> enter into your rooms and close your doors behind you. Hide for a little while until indignation runs its course. All right, so now all, every, all the dead in Christ, plus those who are alive and remain, were given a prophetic instruction. What's going to happen? We're going to enter the rooms, the, uh, the rooms of the mansions that Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. We're going to enter into the rooms, and he said, close the door behind you. When Noah got on the ark, God closed the door behind mm -hmm. him. Yes. And sealed it from the outside. Yes. All right, so now we're going to be entering into our mansions, and then keep reading. For behold, the Lord is about to come out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity, and the earth will reveal her bloodshed and no longer cover her slain. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to go into our rooms, and we're going to hide from the, in, the wrath of God for seven years. Yes. But we're going to be able to look down on the earth and see the wrath. We're going to have we're going to have a knowledge of it. How much of a knowledge? I'm not really sure, but we're going to know enough about what's going on. And we're going to be we're going to be spectators with a different vision of the human body since we no longer have the human body as we know it right, right now. Right. And if I could just add one little thing. Remember when you were talking about um, people thought that they would, when you get to heaven, and let's say I, I knew you as a 20-year-old, but don't know what you look like at 60, and you're talking about this guitar, that little toy guitar, and this mm -hmm. other guitar that's mm -hmm. got so many more things, and we're going to have such a, an imperishable body that is so full of power and everything. Mm -hmm. I believe that that person that you meet um, when, they're, when you're a kid and you don't see them again, when, when you get to heaven, and, and, that, and if that kid is up there, he may have died as an old person, but your eyes will automatically see who that was at that time in your life that you knew them. You see what I mean? Yes, I do. 
I think that's fascinating. Yeah, it is fascinating. You know? And, and we, I know God's capable. But we will be able to totally. identify everyone we've ever met in heaven instantaneously. That's right. They won't be wearing a name badge either. That's right. Let's all stand to our feet. <laughs> Father, we thank you for this teaching here tonight. Amen. We give you honor and glory and praise. Father, I ask that you give uh, me a great message for your people for Sunday. And Father God, that our television broadcast and our YouTube channels and all of our other platforms, Father God, uh, reach the lost and get many people, Father God, into the kingdom of God. And Father, amen. we thank you for that now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. amen and amen. So this is Pastor Dave and Kathy Gonzalez saying. Press into God. And he'll press into you. And we'll see you again here this Sunday at, at the, the mountain. mountain. Amen.